Welcome, friends. This is the Instant Speed Podcast retrospective, perhaps, or is it the forward spective? Is that a word? Forward spective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forward spection. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Flake with Mark Gibson, aka Mark Theus, aka producer extraordinaire at uh, 93 Media, uh, the big head honcho uh, of 93 <laughs> Media, known for such productions as this podcast. As wow. Yeah, uh, the Goliath Gauntlet and a whole bunch of other things that uh, if if you're well attuned into the wild world of CCGs over the past few years, you've probably seen something that Mark has done. Um, it's good to have you here, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, the fun thing about being on the show is that I know so many of you guys and you guys don't know me. <laughs> so it's a fun moment of like, hey, yeah, uh, hi, uh, you can finally get to see who I am. So. Yeah, it's it's a nice little behind the curtain scene because a lot of people don't know. And what's fascinating is everybody thinks... And, and like I'll get DMs about people who are starting their own podcasts or starting their own content. And they're like, so how do you produce it? Like, how do you make it look so good? I'm like, I don't I don't know anything. I <laughs> I basically I uh, and Mark, you could probably tell people how long did it take me to realize how the hell to use like a Dropbox? Oh, my gosh. We were back and forth forever on that one. <laughs> it's like it's pinned. It's <laughs> pinned in the chat. Just click on the thing. Slide the thing. I'm like, yes, I know. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. I, I was actually when I was upgrading my computer. Mark, I was just talking to the the dudes at the place. Um, uh, shout out to Memory Express in the GTA because they actually were awesome people who helped me out and uh, were just good people. So uh, that's free advertising for them, I guess. <laughs> but uh, they're they're good people. But I was talking to them and I just mentioned, I'm like, dude, I don't know when it was. It was sometime when I was like 24 or 25 where I woke up one day and somebody asked me a computer related question and I literally felt like a caveman, like I knew nothing. <laughs> Like it was literally me smashing two two rocks together to make fire, and like, I had you, no you, clue. You built this new PC, right? So, I did. Right now, I always thought that the first time you ever build your very first PC all on your own is when you really start to learn how shit works. Because then the next time you're going to go upgrade, okay, I know how this fits in. I know how everything plugs in. So hopefully, this was a good learning experience, and you retained some of the information from your building. Oh. Venture. <laughs> Big time. So also, the first PC I ever built was in 2015, and it was actually myself and uh, my buddy uh, Gary, aka The House. You've probably seen him. He's like one of my oldest mm -hmm. friends. Uh, I adore this guy. Uh, ult ultimately, he put together my first PC in terms of he basically, we talked about it. We went for a few weeks, and he's like, here's what you have agreed you want. It's all compatible. I double-checked it. Buy the parts. We'll build it together. So literally, we bought. I bought all the stuff. I brought all the components to his apartment, and we like we ordered pizza. We built the computer, and it worked. So I was like, I, I was there. I was helping. You know, I was I was like his his son. You know, working <laughs> on the car. You know, holding yeah. the light. And and but we got it done. And this time, I was like, how hard can it be? I saw him do it. I know exactly what to do. I I budgeted like two to three hours of my Sunday afternoon to do it, and like seven hours later. It was not done, and I was panicking, and I was losing sleep. I didn't eat. It was it was crazy, but I finally got it done, um, and uh, and here we are. So yeah, yeah, it's it, an it's experience, awesome. man. It's a journey. I mean, when I first built my very first PC, I mean, I watched a ton of videos and YouTube videos on on how to do everything. I kind of just followed along a YouTube tutorial as I was doing it, and that's kind of how I I did mine. But uh, I mean, like, yeah, when you first turn it on, it's always like a hold your breath moment, and it takes some, you know, troubleshooting. I, I when you were saying your issue, I thought it was actually maybe a power source thing. Like you didn't have enough, you didn't buy a big enough power source to to power. Like because those those three eighties, man, they <laughs> they take a lot oh. of juice. Uh, yeah, I had that problem myself when I bought the thirty ninety. I had to buy a whole new power source because it just wasn't getting enough juice. Uh, well, that's crazy. what I was worried about. Like frankly, yeah. I I went through the the gauntlet of. It's funny because like I wouldn't I, I'm not by any means this is not me blaming house for anything but we went through everything and he's like okay well if you're gonna want a new processor you're gonna need a new motherboard if you yeah. want a new RAM and a new video card you need a new motherboard yep. Yep. so I was like okay well let's just do it I said if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and we looked through everything 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 completely for, and forgetting that I you know had parts from a decade ago right you know that, an that HDD. hard drive that hard drive yeah, yeah. <laughs> like think about it there's there there's still computers out there that have needles touching discs like it's like <laughs> yeah, like a yeah. record player yeah i mean unfortunately when you're that far out of upgrades like you literally cannot take any old because i tried the same thing where i tried to take some old ram and, and and put it on to my motherboard nope when you're that far out you just you have to get all new components because those motherboards just can't take those old things and i mean it 
but now you're now you're upgraded. So next time you're ready to do like the you're all new. So now you go piece by piece, right? So next time you go, okay, the, I need some more RAM. Now you just upgrade the RAM. I need a new graphics yep. card. You just upgrade that, right? Oh, it's all and done. So yeah. So now it's like it's easy. All done. Now, instead of waiting seven more years, you could just, you know, little pieces <laughs> upgrade as you nope. go. <laughs> seven more. I will see you in 2029. All right. Is when I'm sure. going to look at my next uh, computer build. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just funny because like, this like my the way that I picture my computer, it's like Frank Costanza, and this everything was going well until I plugged in the HDD, and it's like, what do you what do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> just like okay, I'm sorry. It's, I'm you reminded me of the right. episode where they're selling computers. Hi, you want to buy a computer? Why yeah. not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. Lloyd Braun <laughs> sold twelve computers today. His, his phone's not even plugged in. <laughs> like that's kind of yes, how it works. Exactly. All right. So we're we're here to talk about uh, I guess a little bit of the year in, in past, um, but more so about looking forward because that's what we want to do. Mark mm-hmm. is look forward and. Um, Technically, we embarked on this flesh and blood endeavor together yeah. in 2021. Uh, I think sep- September was our mm-hmm. first episode of Instant Speed. Yep. And that essentially, you know, kind of grew into myself getting um, my first shot at casting, mm-hmm. uh, which was at the like right into the big leagues, kid. We went to the national championships in Orlando, yeah. which went well. And then the the podcast started to gain a little bit of traction, and a lot of that is because your work on it as well, Mark. So sure, uh, I, yeah. I mean, it's funny how the show started because like, uh, uh, and we had we we always talk about that lost episode with Tannen, which was the very first episode. But like, that was all you. That was um, I. I mean, you would come to me to make you the graphics for the the show, and I made you like kind of the basics. And then you you went off and you did that first episode with Tannen on your own channel. And that's when I came back for you and I said, why don't I just help you with this? Because <laughs> I saw that some of the graphics you put in, I was like, ooh, that didn't that didn't look so good. <laughs> well, but, I mean, it, I think a lot of it, Mark, is like it's it's kind of like if you have a kid and they want to help you like with yard work or something. And it's like, all right, well, here's the here's the rake. Start raking leaves. Yeah. And they're just terrible at it. It's like, you know, what, let me just like, rake. Let me just rake it. Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, it. I but, got it. You're good. Well, you did good. Congratulations. Kid. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't just that, but like you know, you and I have done so many stuff together, right? Like we did all those trivia shows for other games, and we've we've done a lot of productions already. Like you know, we've done lands together. We've done uh, online productions, and I think at that point it was just like you and I have a good synergy when working together. Where you know you're 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 good on the talent side and the bringing guests in and talking and interviewing and all that, and then you know I, that's where I come in and make it look good and I clean it up and I make it you know what it looks like and i think like together we we made a very good team with that so when it came to this show it was like i saw the potential in what you were trying to do i just thought that that very first one i was like well that was that was a bit rough like why don't we work on this together we'll we'll put it on 93's channel and we'll try to grow it from there and um you know it was a gamble i i i i wanted to cancel the show at one point and you fought me on it and uh and luckily I was like, all right, wh- whatever. Let's just see what happens, and we'll just keep doing it. And look, look at where we are. So I feel like you and I are that that uh, you know, look at us gift from uh, Hot Ones. The you know, <laughs> who knew? You know, like because uh, I didn't know it was going to get as popular as it. I think really what launched it was that first episode with James, where we finally got uh, someone who legitimized what we were trying to do, and someone who was comfortable enough to you know, the creator of the show coming on your on your podcast to be comfortable enough to talk about the game, I think was a big deal. And that's what kind of really put the show on the map. And, and then it kind of took off from there. So well, yeah, and, and this is something that a lot of people, you know, who are getting into the space, I wrote a whole article for Wraith Times about the pitfalls and the challenges of getting into uh, content creation. And, and one of the things is like, when I was evaluating how much time I put into broadcasting before I saw a, a dime or, or any kind of, uh, you know, I estimated it to between 1500 and 2000 hours of streaming and other types of things, uh, before it actually, before I actually got like, a, a an email or a phone call or a whatever yeah. from anything saying, Hey, would you like to try out for this? So it, it what it's, it's de- definitely difficult. And, uh, I saw the potential not just in the show, uh, which I, I did, but also in the game. And I think that that's a, an important aspect. But a lot of this, like you mentioned, is just the fact that there's a lot of guests that came onto the show that were completely comfortable opening up and being very candid about certain things. And mm-hmm. if there's one thing that I wanted to make sure this show was about was that 
it's not about me. And obviously, you know this, I have a big personality and I like to talk, but I wanted to make sure that the show was about the person and the topic that is coming onto the show that we could dig into that because people have stories to tell. People have opinions and standpoints uh, or they have, you know, and, and they not maybe not always have a platform, but I want it to be a place where people can go and really pump the tires on their own pro projects yeah. and whatnot. And um, a, a big up to like big ups to people like James White, like you mentioned, who not just uh, James was a, was somebody who surprisingly to me, Mark, was somebody who was listening to the show already. Yeah, and, and we found out yeah. the whole office listens to it, which was really shocking. But I think we yeah, were that, at the time we were it was us and Arsenal Pass, and I think maybe one other show. So there wasn't really a lot. So they probably just listened to anything that was or whatever content was there. Yeah, yeah. the the space wasn't necessarily as populated as it is right now. However, you know, back in 2021 when we were amidst a, a handful of podcasts. Now there's, you know, dozens of them, but uh, we were out there and people appreciated. it. And like you said, when James came on, the one thing that I really, really appreciated in terms of feedback was a lot of people were saying, hey, this is an action, this is a, this is not an ass kissing interview. This is not mm. a, oh my God, I love you kind of interview. This is actually asking hard questions and asking important questions that the community wants to know about and you're not, you know, pussyfooting around them. Yeah. in order to you're not here to make friends you're here to get to get answers and to get whatever and uh, a lot of that credit goes to these guests who were asked difficult questions who came up with honest answers and i think that's what also uh, you know endeared james to people was that his willingness to go on these shows to be asked the, the tough questions and to and to admit the shortcomings or the the missteps that he or lss had made up until that point because it's a it's a learning curve for everyone so mm -hmm. that was a, a big deal for us yeah we also prepared for that episode for a while like we knew it was coming so we we had been preparing for it we had uh you know pre we we sent him i believe we had sent him questions ahead of time or what we were going to yeah. talk about to make sure we weren't going to like hit any sore spots but like the refreshing thing about that is he was very open um I think with most of our guests, we tell them like, here's what we're going to talk about. Here's what we want to say. Yeah. And, and most people are very cool with it. And um, what set us apart, I think the reason why he, I, I, I don't know if James has been, has he been on the other shows? I think he may have. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. James, James has been uh, on uh, a few other podcasts. Yeah. Right. So I think what drew him to this one and why he said yes was um, I, like at the very beginning, there was Arsenal Pass who was very focused on the, I don't want to say esports because that's not really what tabletop is, but more focused on, on, the, on the competitive side of the game, you know, it's, uh, you know, with Hayden and, and, uh, and Brendan, and they talk way more about like deck teching and things like that. And like, that's what makes that show like so good. Um, and then I think for us, we wanted to be more like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to copy them. Cause we, you know, I don't want to be anyone's competition. There's no, the, the space isn't big enough for that. So like, that's why I like that. We focused more on the person aspect and let's get to know people a little bit more. Let's bring on like Tarek or Matt Rogers or something like that. And, and just like get to know who they are as a person, how they got into the game and, all my, my favorite parts of most of these episodes have been the origin story, uh, as you called it, because it's so interesting to hear what games they came from and how they discovered Flesh and Blood. And that's always the most fascinating part. So I think like that's really what kind of attracted James to say yes. And and then we had him on again and then we did the Q&A and then like, you know, we, we've had him to like, hey, well, we'll make your show like the state of the game situation. So it's been kind of like really cool to to be that uh, show for the community um and yeah i think that's like if anyone out there listening who wants to start a flesh and blood podcast you got to find your unique angle i think that's the that's the best way to do it yeah uh, and again like when you mentioned like the competition and whatnot like when it came down to arsenal pass and us it what's interesting is like i've had multiple discussions with brendan and hayden and uh we are all great friends and i the one thing that i sincerely sincerely appreciate about this community and, and you can probably echo this is that we have been in the other community spaces mm -hmm. where other content creators or other entities that make content don't want to collaborate don't want to support yeah. don't want to have anything to do with people who are in their territory as it were it's not the case here um we're not in competition with anybody you know, or, you know, we are and we aren't in that degree, but we don't feel like that's the case. It's not like, you know, uh, you know, uh, fresh and buds or flesh and pod or arsenal pass or any, like, we're not out there being like, Oh, screw those guys. We need to steal their listens. If, if a person listens to them, they could still listen to us. And they do like, they, yeah. we, you know, they listen to all of us. We don't 
see it that way. And having the discussion with Brendan and Hayden, where basically they said they're like, hey, you know, we used they used to have a, a thing called um, time in the round or something where they would interview community members. And they're like, yeah, we don't really do that anymore because you just do it better. And I'm like, dude, I don't talk about meta or or deck techs or anything because you do it better and we did yeah we used to do deck techs we right. used to do that kind of stuff but we don't do it anymore because we just don't do it we don't like it's better for the community to listen to the people who are better equipped to provide those kinds of that kind of dialogue or yeah. for us we're, we're just happy about it but like all overall <laughs> like i'm you know like mentioned, you mentioned like we give people the questions in advance and stuff like that. We do that for people that we're not necessarily 100% familiar with or who have never been on the show. But when I have Tommy on or I have Matt Rogers on or DM Armada especially, like when I have people who have been on the show multiple times, it, it like I'm like, dude, this is the main topic we're going to talk about and then we're going to vamp. Yeah, and well, those are, those amazing. are regulars. So those are like, you know, the, your regular rotation of people. So those aren't, you know, the, I, I mean, more like uh, we do that for guests that are like yeah. a one off or like a big name. That's uh, like, you know, like people like uh, professor, people like that, right? Who are like a big name you're going to bring in that that aren't part of your normal rotation, like Tommy or Tarek or Matt or people like that. But uh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, it, what you said about like the competing thing. It's like. That's the one thing that's interesting about doing content creation for Flesh and Blood that stands out from the others. Because uh, one of your favorite sayings you used to tell people is that, oh, uh, oh, Mark, he probably produced a show that you you didn't even know who he was, but he probably produced a show you watched. And I always laughed at that. But it's like I looked back at my uh, resume over the last few years. Like I have worked on like every game. <laughs> yeah, I've done something for pretty much every card game. And the one thing that stood out with Flesh and Blood and why I love doing shows for Flesh and Blood and why I enjoy the people in this community the most is because it doesn't feel like I'm competing for your views. It doesn't feel like I have to create something to be better than somebody else. Um, it just feels like we're all working together. It's like, uh, you know, I, I'm not stealing views from Tommy. We're, we're just, we're, we're, why can't we enjoy each other's content and like work together on stuff as well? Like that is something that is a little bit unique, I think, with Flesh and Blood. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't exist in other card games, but it definitely is something that is more present uh, that I've found anyway with Flesh and Blood because I have yet to run into any content creators in Flesh and Blood that were very like competitive or refusing to do anything with us or, you know, I, I don't know. I'm sure there are there, one. but... <laughs> There has there, been I, one, not that I was aware of. Yeah, well, it's like I not I don't want to say I don't care. Like I don't I don't care, but like there has been one person who has uh declined to come on the show because they uh they're like oh, I have exclusivity. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I remember all that. No, we don't well, need that, to mention whatever. That yeah, that's uh It was just to me it was hilarious <laughs> because I was like, okay, and yeah, then whatever. <laughs> this uh, this person hasn't really done much eh, since then. What are you going to do? Like, I mean, there's eh, always well, people like that, right? But like, oh, yeah, it, I'm not going to hold grudges. We just move yeah. on. Yeah. But when we've done other stuff, like I won't name specific shows or anything like that, but like when we've done uh, content in Magic or when we've done content in Gwent or uh, Hearthstone or whatever, there's always been that feeling of, well, I have to do better than my competition. I have to uh, take their idea and do it better so people will watch my version or do more techie stuff, especially in Magic. Like if you're not doing deck techs, if you're not doing deck lists, you're not doing gameplay, I mean, you know, you're you're one of the few that are ever going to get watched. Like I, I know, like uh, I watched a, a lore video the other day, and somebody, the person who was, I don't want to name names, but the person who was making the lore video was like, you know, I can't can't do this anymore because every time I do these lore videos, they're the most fun to make, but nobody wants to watch it. And like that kind of stuff is really soul sucking because you're literally taking the most fun content for someone to make and just nope doesn't matter and yeah. that's something that i don't get the sense of here because we've done we've tried a bunch of different things and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but like we've tried trivia that worked out pretty well we've done this show we've done salty logs we've done the stack like we tried different formats we tried different ideas and they've all kind of been well received and supported and that's uh, something that's uh i'm gonna just say bizarre because <laughs> that's not really an experience i've had with other communities so it's a unique thing Let's uh, let's go down the list of just so people when I like and I mean it when I say like, hey, there's a there's a good chance that you've watched or consumed content that Mark's <laughs> been involved in. Um, I'm going to run down the list of, of games and you just say sure. yes or no that you've, you've done content all right. for this. All right. Uh, all right. So obviously Flesh and Blood. Yep. Uh, Gwent. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mythgard. Yep. Magic. Yep. Uh, what did I say? Um, Jeez, uh, uh, cards, the World War II card game. Oh, big time, yep. <laughs> uh, Hearthstone? Yes, yes, very early uh, on, yes. Um, what am I missing? Am I missing some? 
Uh, you, I think Runeterra uh, might be the net, the big one that you've never, No, you've done. No, we've done Runeterra. Runeterra. We've done the stack Runeterra, and we also did some. We did a uh, we did a mini competition for Runeterra. It was a charity thing. All right, uh, Marvel uh, Snap. Uh, we have done Marvel Snap. Yeah, we've done some deck guides. Yep. Yeah. yeah, So there you have it. I, am I missing some? <laughs> I must be missing some. I think the only thing that I ever really touched was like I think I tried to get into Eternal, but we didn't quite. We we talked about some stuff, but didn't get into it, and then like. I think that's really like the only one I can't like the other ones are like very small games. So I can't think of any other like major or like semi major uh, card games. I mean, we're going to be getting into a bunch that I can't talk about yet for next year. But like there's a lot coming coming down the line. But yeah, I mean, when you mentioned cards, like we produce like, you know, 93 produces all cards like esports basically. And then we did the same for Mythgard. We basically produced all of Mythgard's esports before they uh, went into maintenance mode and all that. And you and I did yeah. the podcast for that. Remember the Boneyard? We did the Boneyard yeah. podcast, yeah. which we, I I loved. I loved the Boneyard yeah, podcast. Uh, that was a great podcast, and we had a lot of the we had Fu on a lot, who was the the designer of the show. He was really great, and um, you know, that's something that I enjoy the most is when we do these shows and we bring in the the actual people that make the game because that's like those are the best episodes to learn to pick their brain and learn how how'd you come up with this crazy thing, and like you know, just listening to their how their mind works is just fascinating. It's it's awesome. Uh, before we move on to what's coming in mm. 2023, I just want to dig in a little bit about the mild phenomenon or the the this the fact that I, I tweeted out a couple days ago or about a week ago, and because I was again, it's December, I get all the preview channels for or, or like free previews for channels that I'll never get, but <laughs> some of them are like old sitcoms, yeah, and. So I, I get to watch Cheers like a million times Heck a day yeah. now. Um, and I, I, I like hearing the theme song for Cheers for me is it's like it's the perfect, perfect, perfect theme song for that show. It is. It is. It, it's iconic. The the words and the lyrics and the meaning and the, the whole feel of it is beautiful. And our theme song for ISP is people are like I've gotten so many messages saying what is that song what is that song what is that song and when you hear it people always mention it that it's like as soon as i hear that i know what i'm getting they've just they've made that link and the song for those who don't know the theme song for isp is a song called motionless and the artist is named stepper Rhodes. now that's not that's a stage name this person is a friend of a friend my old bar manager or service manager from the restaurant i used to work at he was a drummer who then worked with stepper Rhodes for that song he was the drummer for that song and i loved 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 that song so i reached out to this person stepper Rhodes, just messaged him like hey you don't know me i'm a big fan of your of this music i'm friends with so and so and so and so i am starting a podcast i need a theme song for it I'm asking for your permission and for the rights to use this on the show uh, moving forward. I just need you to, in in writing, say that you're allowing me to use this for this purpose. Yeah. And he's like, absolutely, freaking lutely, like no problem and whatever and this and that, thinking that it would have been a throwaway. And then I send him every now and then, I send him like screenshots or clips or whatever uh, or messages that I get. And then the views from some of our bigger episodes. And mm-hmm. I say like, dude, everybody knows your music now yeah. like everybody knows this song and he's like holy shit like that's pretty <laughs> cool and what's fascinating is that uh, i'm not saying that we inspired him to do new music but he's like dude he's like i'm i'm starting to write new music now he's wow because like, i asked him if he can be on the show to talk about it and he's like you know what let's do it in a while because i'm gonna i'm gonna do some new music and maybe i can come onto your show and talk about it and i said hell yes Maybe so, he can write us a new theme song. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. I, I don't, I, I mean, like, yeah, but are, like, are you going to change the theme song for this to, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I look, the, the, we've also linked to the music video, I think, a couple of times when people have asked. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually didn't like the song when you first sent it to me. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right, we'll use it, whatever. But it did grow on me. The more I heard it, the more it grew on me. And it is a good song. It's, uh, and it did become kind of like the, I mean, you don't actually end up ever hearing the chorus, I think, in in any of the Flesh and Blood uh, or any of the uh, Instant Speed parts. But um, it's really just that opening line, I think, is what got you about the shuffling my cards. Uh, why is everybody well, shuffling my cards? That was the so hook was, for yeah. me. And so that was the line that we wanted to kind of like accentuate as like, this is the this is the line and the reason why this is the theme song. Um, 
So yeah, it, it's interesting because people recognize the song, but they recognize the opening. I, I remember uh, Blevins one time talking uh, talking about that being like, uh, oh, you know, you just know Instant Speed, you hear that opening riff and that's like Instant Speed now. So it's really funny that the, the association and it's cool that he's uh, the, the guy that wrote it's uh, so on board with it because it's, uh, you know, it it's a good song. It'd be cool to have him write like a theme for something else we do. That'd be cool. I think that would be really, really rad. I'm going to yeah. talk to him uh, recently. Actually, I messaged him uh, again uh, last month and I just said, hey, just, you know, I, I, I want to just double check if you're cool maybe in the in q1 of of whatever of 2023 or whatever if you want to come on the show and and whatnot and he's like absolutely he's like hey you're into cards right i said yeah, you're damn right and apparently he was actually developing a card game for the wow. past few years oh, yeah, wow. you know it's just so i was like we could talk about this that would be a yeah. great episode talk about your card game and everything i think that's a really good idea but uh for all those who want to go check it out um i can honestly say i don't know where you can get the physical music like a cd or anything i don't think it's on spotify but it is on youtube and yeah, which means um, you, which means you can get it on your if you have youtube music it it'll be there because if you just like we'll link we can link the music video again on this but uh, yeah. you can listen to it on your youtube music so put it on your repertoire there you go so the song is called motionless and the artist is stepper Rhodes. uh roads r-h-o-d-e-s okay. like the microphone that's i guess I yeah that's like road like is that what it is? yeah I don't know. I don't know this. Thing. <laughs> All right. Again, like I told you, uh, I woke up and went and turned 24 and forgot everything technological. Right, That's okay. correct. <laughs> okay. So, friends, 2022 was exceptional. Uh, you, you guys all saw the Speedy Awards uh, a few days ago or last week or whatnot. And uh, just in retrospect, uh, you know, looking at the year that was, it was super successful. We love you all for your support. Mark and I obviously are, are just so thrilled with how this has been going. And 2023 is going to be a, a bigger deal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we're going to be continuing this show, of course, uh, into a third season. Um, and then we'll do we'll be doing more stack, I assume. <laughs> we haven't done that show in a little while. But uh, uh, we want to do probably more salty logs. Those are a little bit more infrequent, though, because it all depends on, like, what kind of logs we get uh, or what, what people submit. And some, some of them are good. Some of them are, eh, we got we to gotta look at it in, like, how does this act out? Can we act this out correctly? You know, and, and yeah. The, the tough part about salty logs is just getting the submissions. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, no offense. I, <laughs> I, I honestly, I appreciate all the submissions, but some of them are just, they're not that like, it's just somebody, you know, uh, playing a, a, a crippling crush and then somebody disconnects. Like it's, yeah. I get it. They're salty. They rage quit. It's not, <laughs> it's not dramatic. It's just them being, yeah, we're looking for losers. someone to be over. We're looking for people being overly dramatic about their situation. That's really like what's going to yeah. like hit it. Like someone who's just like, they've literally been sitting here all day and they've just hit their end of the rope and they just like lose their mind on the next person they play. That's has done nothing wrong. <laughs> that's really what, what we look Precisely. for. Precisely. Yeah. That's that's exactly what we want. Yeah. And, um, so we're going to be doing those. I think the goal is one a month and to really ham it up and hopefully have a good, you know, repertoire of good uh, salty logs and stuff like that. So that's on the horizon. But I think uh, there's there's plenty more that we're, we're we're already kind of kicking tires and getting things uh, put together for uh, Goliath Gauntlet 2. Which yeah, is yeah, it's going to be huge. a bit. It's going to be a busy, uh, busy year, not just not just for flesh and blood, but just, I mean, like in general, like a lot of stuff being worked on, but in flesh and blood specifically, yeah, we're working on the second Goliath Gauntlet. That's going to be coming to you. Uh, I believe in end of January, uh, going into February and, um, you know, uh, hopefully expanding on that and, and hoping, a th I'm hoping a third one, but we'll see how number two goes. So make sure you watch. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there's some other shows we've talked about too, like, uh, maybe trying some, like, uh, what was it called? A uh, pit, pit fire pit what was it what's the uh what's the group thing what's the group thing called again uh <laughs> the, the pit fight oh the ultimate pit fight oh pit fight yeah well, I was, yeah I was like spitfire for some reason i don't know why i was going down you could road, but... call it well, you've uh, been playing too much cards <laughs> yeah man. i too guess much so. world war ii cards yeah yep, that's it <laughs> uh um, ultimate pit fight show yeah, yeah, we've, yeah we've we've yet to sort of announce or talk about it but that is something that's in the works it's going to be myself dm armada and red zone rogue with a rotating guest playing a, basically a four-way pit fight yeah um with 
hilarity to ensue. Yeah, so, you know, that's we, we, on the we saw so many of these uh, in Magic with these EDH shows, and and, and there's a couple I've, we've tried to get off the ground ourselves, and it's like, you know, it's a really crowded space. Because that seems to be the only format people want to play anymore in Magic, <laughs> or at least uh, for the content side, like that's a good one to consume. But like uh, instead of trying to compete with that, like, well, why don't we just do a Flesh and Blood? Let's you know, let's do it that way. So I think that would be really fun, and uh, I I would also really like to uh, bring back the trivia, uh, maybe Flesh and Blood trivia, or so you think you know Flesh and Blood. So we had another show for a while called So You Think You Know The Witcher, which did really well. We had we even had Doug Cockle on, who's the voice of uh, uh, who's the voice of uh, Geralt. Um, so that show was really fun, but like a lot of those things kind of like tapered off or they ended or, you know, they were one-off kind of deals. And like, it, it, it's fun to take those concepts and see if you can apply it to all the different types of games. And I think what you and I have found a lot from doing different games is a lot of the concepts we've tried do kind of fit into every, every game. And that's what kind of makes them really fun. Like trivia shows and, and things like that do kind of fit into everything. So yeah, it's, um, it's a good community, at least from the flesh and blood side, but like also just having you having ideas um you know that just are they're fun they're engaging in like you know in small clips obviously isp is kind of like the flagship of our flesh and blood content uh, you know it's long form it's good mm -hmm. it's good discussion but you know every now and then just drop in a, a nice 10 to 15 minute video of just fun stuff is is also <laughs> good that's yeah. what that's what the stack is you know and yep. you know having having good uh good guests and good dialogue on that it's it's a lot of fun so uh, I, I honestly believe that 2023 is just going to be a, a pretty a pretty solid year. So I yeah, mean, yeah, just for sure. just from a flesh and blood con like perspective, what what are what's everything that we're working on uh, for 2023 so far? Like we don't even we're not even there yet, and who knows? Like yeah. So I mean, you're gonna get this show. This is guaranteed. Like ISP is obviously going to continue in 20. So at least you get that. So if anything else, you know that instant speed will always be <laughs> will always be there next year. Yeah, you'll get some instant speed, uh, monthly salty logs. Hopefully, as long yeah, as they're hopefully. as long as they're flowing in. Yep. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, we're gonna get the stack rolling again yeah. once. Uh, once sort of probably biweekly, I think going forward because yeah. it was getting a little tough to uh, do that show weekly and come up with questions uh, that were different because like there isn't always heavy news. There isn't always like heavy topics to talk about. So that one will probably be a little bit more infrequent because uh, if if you watch any of the other stacks we did with like. Uh, we did one with Runeterra. We did one with Snap. Um, those were also infrequent because it was like, or yeah, we also did one with Magic. I, I'm forgetting that one with Amy. Um, yeah, they need to be infrequent. Otherwise, they're, <laughs> you know, it's a little too much. But and the last one, yeah, like again, then the bigger picture stuff, like Goliath Gauntlet. Um, yeah. Goliath and, Gauntlet's going to be huge. Yeah, that's kind of, um, that's kind of like the focus, I think, uh, moving in well for for 93 specifically like the the focus moving into next year is more on tournaments and invitationals and things like that because that's that's really what 93 was created to do was to run uh tournaments and, and invitationals and put on these cool productions like we did for goliath Conlon. and that was a really good example of um uh kind of the whole reason why 93 is a thing <laughs> was to put on an event like goliath Conlon. so um doing more of those i think is a is a is a focus moving forward. And, and also, uh, I also wanted to just say briefly, cause I've seen this comment a lot whenever we post like magic or something like that, that isn't flesh and blood. Like, look, don't, don't lie to yourself. I know that you don't just play flesh and blood. <laughs> I know that you like other things and that's okay. It's okay to like other things. And like, if you don't like the other thing that we did, that isn't flesh and blood, that's okay too. You don't have to tell us like, you know, you're not, this isn't an airport. You don't have to announce that you're leaving. You could just be like, Oh, I didn't want, I don't want to watch that. You know how many channels there are where I don't like every single video they post, but like, you know, uh, like hot ones is one of my favorite shows on YouTube. And that's the only show I watch on first we feast. So I'm just saying, like, it's okay to just pick and choose. <laughs> but hold on a second. So you're saying you don't go to other shows and tell them that you do not like them? I I, I haven't yet done that. I I don't know no. what compels people to do that. But it's uh, <laughs> either way. Whenever whenever there's like a negative comment, my favorite thing to be is it's like, hey, thanks for adding to our view count. Like, yeah, awesome. yeah, exactly. Much oh, there's, appreciated. There's also uh, I will address an elephant in the room for anyone that has watched the um has watched the Dungeons and Dragons campaign that Merchant did uh, the the uh, his group. Uh, Guild Gates and Goblins. There is a final episode that has never come out that has been lingering, and I all those people that who who watch this show that I've also enjoyed that content. I just want to let you know that don't expect it in 2023 either, because what ended up happening is everyone kind of like their life got really crazy, and it was really hard to get them all together for that last episode. So 
I don't know if it's something that's ever going to actually happen. I think it's just a campaign that's just going to end on a lingering note. But if I can get them all together for the final episode, I would love to do that. And so, you know, we'll cross our fingers. But but like because everyone keeps commenting, when's the last episode? When's the last episode? I don't I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to be a thing. 2023 is like it's like it's so 2023 is like 10 days away. It right is. from the point of that we're recording this which <laughs> yes. is we're recording this on the 21st of december by the time yeah. this is published it's probably tomorrow who the yeah. hell knows uh, i don't know <laughs> that that said you got a whole 12 months 365 days to figure this out yeah to get a few people together it's a lot harder than you think to get that they're all very busy right like they're all they're all like uh i, I mean especially like uh Lavinia's like got a whole new job like she works like for Magic Arena now or something and like all this kind of like stuff so like it was really hard to just get them like back together and because she's traveling so much and then merchants moving and it's a whole thing man like it just uh, it turned into a whole thing so uh, I just wanted to address that uh, finally uh, publicly if anyone listens to this also listen watch that we'll see where it goes <laughs> we'll see how yeah. 2023 goes. All right. Well, 2023 is going to be, you know, big. we still need to figure out a name for the uh, the UPF show that's going to be coming around the bend here. Um, but yeah, uh, now's also a good time is if anybody's got, you know, suggestions for guests they want to see or people to yeah. play on the UPF show. I, I really want to do like a Friday night pit fight kind of deal where we, you know, put it out on Friday nights. And, and kind of, I kind of really like this premiere format because uh, we did it with, with Goliath Gauntlet. And I think it worked out really well. Where we're kind of premiering the video at like a prime time. So it's like it's live, but it's not really live. You know, it's like we get yeah. to watch it together live and comment live. But it's not like it's not like we're trying to put on a live show like that way. And I think actually that format works very well. So I would love to do something like that with Pit Fight where maybe we present it that way uh, and see how it goes. But um, yeah, Friday Night Pit Fight is kind of like where I was going with that. But uh, yeah, definitely let us know who you want to see on that. Um, it would be great to get some big hitters in there like maybe Pablo <laughs> like people like oh we'll get like, we're gonna get all the yeah. all the big names we're gonna get everybody to to show up and really uh swing uh swing big at uh at this this new concept here and and i have to also give a lot of love to people like dm armada and red zone rogue who are just like they're like hell yeah like let's let's do this like they're they're big fans of your work uh mark and they mm -hmm. just that that and again we talked about this earlier that what's so great about this cut this uh this whole community is that a lot of people are like well i can't I'm not going to be on your show because if I'm on your show, then I'm not on my own channel or my own stuff that that doesn't exist here. And like, I tell this to people all the time, um, you know, like I'll go on any show, you know, like yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go. You ask me, I will be there. There's very few people out there that I would, uh, that I would not want to collaborate with because I, you know, again, you know me, I don't waste bad, like, like mental bandwidth on things I, I don't like or don't appreciate. But at the same time, I'm not going to go out of my way to to collaborate or whatever. But that's like a, a point zero 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 one percent of people out there, and everybody else. Yeah. Like, you ask me, I'm there. I don't think I can count. Like I think in my life, I've ever declined one podcast guest guest spot ever, ever, yeah. ever, ever. Well, and that's it. I think collaborating is very important, and not just it doesn't matter what space you're in or what what content you're creating. It doesn't in gaming or whatever. It doesn't it doesn't matter. I think that that's something that a lot of uh, content creators. And especially newer ones are, are kind of missing out on and when they want oh why don't i grow why doesn't my channel grow that that's you're not collaborating you're not like when you collaborate you're at, you're now interacting with uh new audiences that, that didn't know you existed you're collaborating with people that may want to do it again uh and and so like not everyone's gonna say yes to you like not everyone says yes to us either you just have to the put big, yourself out there uh, well that's true um I, I will say this though it has become a lot easier to get people on the show. Um, obviously, you know, once you kind of establish yourself and and show people that you're not out there to just get them. Yeah. Um, yeah taking the easier. longer road. Yeah. And and like I know that out there, if I, like this is some free advice for everybody who wants to get into the content creation space, is that you might you might get the views in the short term if you're controversial and uh, and and you know uh adversarial and and just kind of trying to tear people down like people want to people again it's the reason why you know talk shows and like uh jerry springer are so popular is because people like the conflict they like the right. the friction and yeah you want to make a channel and and call people out and you know do some you know mean things sure no problem you'll get the views in the short term but you're not doing yourself any favors and like right. i've seen it in this space i've seen that kind of thing uh and it's it's uh it's an ugly look but for it those is. who who want long-term success it's a slower grind um you know like you and i have been 
working on on content for six or you know five or six years together and nobody knew who we were until like you know a, 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 like this year kind of <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah to a degree so well i think we were it, we were known in other spaces but like it's uh, sure yeah I, sure it, it's funny because uh i used to stream and and stuff so like uh with i miss your so, streams too yeah. <laughs> well once the music stuff kind of went away it was like it wasn't as fun for me anymore but also like when i started doing this and i started 93 like i just it took away too much time so i was like i want to focus on this instead and I was, I've always been a behind the scenes guy. I went, I went to film school. I wanted to always be behind the scenes and I had worked in TV for a long time doing behind the scenes. So like, that's kind of where I thrive and that's where I have the most fun. So I wanted to step away from being in front of the camera, but it really was funny when I went to the first pro tour and like, I saw red zone rogue, for example, I was like, Oh, Hey, hey how you doing? And like I greeted him like, you know, he's a friend and he was just looking at me like, who, who are you? <laughs> it's like, it took him a second until, and then I told him, he's like, Oh yeah. Okay. Right. But it was like, I realized like, that new that pro tour in New Jersey was so funny because so many people, like I said, that I knew and I and I went up to and said hello, who just absolutely had no idea who the hell I was, either because they had never seen my face or they've only heard my voice or they've only heard my name. And it was really funny that it was a weird feeling like <laughs> like knowing all these people who have no idea who you are. It was a really bizarre thing. But um, that, that has kind of subsided now as we've kind of like uh, as I've kind of uh, talked to more people here and there. But. Uh, that's why it's nice to finally be on a guest on the show that I, I helped produce to <laughs> to uh, to kind of, you know, break that veil. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> that's it's something you you don't experience because you're always in front of the camera and you're always. Uh, uh, yeah, people people will recognize me and know things and, and whatnot. And but it wasn't always that way, but we appreciate it. And then that's what matters. It's without. Yeah. Well, you get the other listen. side of it. You get people to say, oh, how'd you do that thing? Or how'd you do that graph? Or how'd you do that video? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do that. I just, I exactly. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Two parts water. Uh, three, you know, like I don't fucking know. Like I'm yeah, not. That's yeah. not me. That's that's Mark. That right there. That's the guy. So Hi. just yeah. Yeah. He's he's the one. So and it's not like, even Damn. it's not even me all by myself. Like uh, we you have a whole team of people that work. You know, we have other editors. We have other producers. We have other. You know, I have a whole. We have a whole staff. For 93 is a whole thing. So that's another thing that that sometimes gets a little frustrating is that people think it's just like. Uh, it's just you or it's just me or whatever oh there's a whole team of people that work on all these things and all these shows like this is just like the the 93 youtube channel is such a small part of like everything else like we produce so many uh tournaments uh for all these different games and and um you know they're either officially or non-officially or, or sponsored or whatever like there's so many things we got going on and uh this is this space doing this kind of stuff with flesh and blood has been a nice like little like uh i don't want to say side project because that's not that's not the way to say it but like this is like you're passionate about flesh and blood this is your like full-time thing and it's been nice to like help you with that to be like oh yeah okay so i got all this other stuff going on with the you know 93 but then i get to do this on the side it's like a you know oh edit a podcast here or there you know that's a nice like little side side thing uh it's all plug and play, baby. <laughs> yeah. I, I say that because for me, I don't have to do anything. I plug the the <laughs> raw video file into a Dropbox, and then two days later, it's magically produced and it <laughs> and it looks great. So that's yeah. that's a not that's honestly a not me for thing. me though. You do the hard part, in my opinion, because the the part that I do is easy for me. But to me, the hard part is the interview. I, I'm not a good interviewer. I'm not good at booking guests. I'm not good at you know that kind of thing. So for me, that's the hard part. So that's how we complement. That's how we complement each other with this kind yeah. of thing. Hardest part is just working with Tannen. What a doofus. <laughs> what a guy. Jeez. What a guy, Tannen. <laughs> All right. No, we love him. We love him to death. But he is, he is, um, he is like, how do I, how do I, uh, how do I describe this? He, Tannen is like, is like having two monkeys, but only one banana. Like, that's kind of <laughs> what it is. It's just this giant, chaotic kind yes. of like, who's in charge? What's going on? Yeah, but it's, at the end of the day, he's he's he gets it done. So. I Tannen, I like Tannen very much, and in person, Tannen was very much like that. Where it was like a lot of like Tannen, hello, hey, 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 Lila, look here, look here, because <laughs> he's just all yep. over the map. But uh, that's what you that's what you gotta love about him is he's very passionate, very very passionate, and that's yeah. that's what makes you could see that and with the way he he like he gets very like either upset or happy or whatever, like because he's so passionate about it, and that, yeah. that's why. I will say uh, every time I've ever called on him for a favor or to do something, he was the first guest on Instant Speed. He didn't have he to do that. He didn't he didn't know who the hell I was. So I will always uh, hold that dear to my heart is the fact that when I was trying to break out into the space and I started that podcast, I started Instant Speed and I was like, I need a good guest to start it off. Let's get like the lead caster from 
what's going on and let's mm-hmm. just see where it goes. Because if it was just me talking to, you know, Joe Blow Saximo, uh, who whatever, nobody would listen. But the fact that you get somebody with at least some some you know some clout, some interest from the community, and that then was the first domino that led to having people like James White or the Professor, right, or you know Matt Rogers, et, et cetera. So. Yeah, the professor was a long time coming too because we tried to get him really early on, and he didn't say no, but it was like a, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm busy until this time, and then when that time came around, oh, I can't until this time. And yeah, like, it, I don't know if he, I don't know if he was doing it on purpose or not, but it was like definitely like a, we're gonna get him eventually. We're, we're gonna get him on the show yeah, eventually, and finally he, at the end of the year we did. Well, he he agreed to to be on the show like like way back when, and um, which was again great, but the approach that like you take to this thing is like whenever you're Whenever you got time, like you don't want to, you know, jam it down their throats and kind of corner them and paint them into the corner of the room and be like, well, what about this time? Or what about this time? Right. You know, you don't, you don't want to like, it's one of those things where it's like, take a hint. If they're, if they're, if they're creating excuses, then they don't want to do it kind of thing. But Mm -hmm. like he was all for it, which was great. And ultimately, uh, it just so happened. And at the end of it, he was supposed to be on, I think sometime in, I think it was like September or October. Uh, and he we basically agreed that's like hey you're gonna be at worlds you're gonna have some announcements to make let's just wait till after that and let's close out the year strong and uh again a lot of this has to do with just good people wanting to support good things and if you're out there and wondering it's like how do i i always get these questions uh from other podcasters who ask me how do you get these guests on what is your approach and my approach legitimately is i just i message them and I, I, yeah. I message them. I say, if you're interested, here's an example of an episode. I would give you the questions in advance. Whatever works, I, I would, I just need approximately sixty to seventy-five minutes of your time on whatever day works for you. We'll, we'll make it happen. And then that's it. And if they don't get back to you, they don't get back to you, and it is what it is. Um, I'm lucky enough to say that everybody I've asked has essentially said yes and yeah. i'm so thankful for that but it's also it's also uh it, and it doesn't seem like it matters but i'm i i assure you it does as a production value side i i highly doubt that people like james or or the professor would have said yes had the show itself looked not great or been presented in a way that like didn't feel it, like just felt cheap right because they don't want they're also putting their name on it and they don't want to be associated yeah. with something that seems like like if we if we had that kind of show that you talk about where we all we talk about is drama or uh, it was like really bad video quality or, you know, just there was no like effort put into it at all. And all we talked about is drama or whatever. Like, no, they would definitely not want to probably be on the show because uh, you don't want to associate yourself with something like that. So, like, if you're if you're looking to start a podcast or even any of the podcasts already out there that are looking to improve next year, like I implore you to look at shows like this or shows like Arsenal Pass and and take notes on how they present it and how. Um, how they edit the show, how how their cameras look, how their microphones sound, how all that kind of stuff. And there's plenty of resources out there that you could like go to to learn, like, how do I optimize my audio? How do I, uh, you know, uh, what's the good editing software to use for video? And I encourage you to learn and to and to, you know, uh, or, or get yourself an editor who if you can afford it, get yourself an editor that can help you with those things, because it seems like not a big deal, but it does go a long way. And that's the reason why this show is where it's at because we took the our expertise and our experience and our background and we put it together and that's how we made the show look the way it does and that's how we got people like you know james to say yeah sure i'll be on your show that's how we got the whole lss office to listen and watch the show you know i i will say this though no amount of money can buy you equipment that will replace either a bad premise or not being prepared uh, yeah. if there's one thing i can honestly say and the other thing about it and and this is all this is you know, most of this is, is from you is just being open to, to constructive criticism oh, absolutely. And, and improving. Trust me, nobody is harder on me than Mark when it comes to, um, <laughs> well, we know each other well enough that I'm not afraid to tell you if something yeah, no. sucked or, Hey, you got to change this or whatever. Cause like, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you, I think you're a great interviewer, but there was definitely at the beginning, it was a little bit rough and we, we talked about how we wanted to, to focus on the guests. And everything. so I wasn't afraid to tell you, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Flake, stop talking so much on the show. It's, it, let the guests speak. <laughs> and, well, that's that's and you know you don't get mad about that. Then that's important. Like you have to take that criticism and then you know apply it. And as you saw, it got you know the interviews got better and the and the listening got better and you know so it well, improved. 
for the professor uh, interview, actually, there was a nice comment I got from somebody who said, hey, I really appreciate you giving the professor all this time to properly flesh out their their comments. But like yeah. that wasn't always the case. The first 10 episodes of this I did. Yeah, I like in my mind what I thought the podcast should be versus what it it should have been were different. And mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that it's like, OK, like you need to understand what your what people want and and sort of tailor it to what it is. You know, what is your podcast? Are you interviewing this person and getting their ideas or are you trying to make this about you? And once you kind of realize that it's about the community, it's about the guests and whatever, you kind of give them a little bit. Now, obviously, I'm going to you know, sprinkle some of my personality in there. Like I can't not do of that. Of course. Much but like the I used to tell you there no you're not tuning into instant speed because I want to watch Flake. You're tuning in because of the most new viewers are going to click on it because of the person that you have on it. And they're going to stay because they enjoyed the interview you gave and they're going to be interested in the next person you have on. And that didn't mean that isn't like nobody gives a shit about Flake. That just means like that's not the real reason that you're going to want to click on the show, right? It, it may for some, sure, but it's not going to really be the main reason why people want to watch it. And uh, so that's like something to remember, too, with, with, if you want to do shows like this, like it has to be, if you're going to have guests, it's going to be about the guests. If, yeah. it, if it's like Arsenal Pass, where they don't really do a lot of guests, it's not really about uh, Hayden or Brendan either. Their show is about the metagame is about speaking about deck techs. And they, that's the focus. And so, you know, coming off of streaming, I think and for you, this is why it was difficult at first. When you're streaming, you talk a lot and you have to fill the void by yourself. So there's constant speaking. You have to, you know, right? You're constantly filling that void. When you start doing a show where you have a guest on, you still feel that urge and need to have to fill space constantly. But when you have a guest, you don't do that. You just, you know, they're filling the space for you. So it's it's a hard thing to get used to, I think. It is. It's definitely a hard thing to get used to. And one of the people that I've come to greatly admire in this space and of this craft, frankly, and, and this is somebody whom I've adored for like decades. It's Conan O'Brien, and and Conan, since he no longer has like his like Conan in the '90s and early 2000s was untouchable in mm -hmm. terms of the kind of comedy and 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 what he did. But his comedy was great. He was the star of the show until the guest came out. But what he has immensely refined himself as over time is a master interviewer who makes the guest feels so comfortable, but also gives as much run. like the guest is still the star, but the way that he injects himself into the conversations is not overbearing. It all it does is support guide and improve the, the, what the message is that the guest is, is putting on there. Like yeah. he is, in my opinion, somebody who I, I aspire to be like one day is to have that kind of skill set and, and seeing him from late night, you know, where he was, bringing out the most ridiculous characters like FedEx Pope and the masturbating bear and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like cyborg, the Jewish robot, you know, like, <laughs> right, right. like all the way to where it is now where he is interviewing like Barack Obama and all these people on his podcast, which by the way, it's called Conan O'Brien needs a friend. I listen to it all the time. Yeah. It's Cause it's, it's, it's a masterclass of like how to be entertaining, how to be yourself, but also how to properly, um, interview somebody insightfully comedically, and you know absolutely without being overbearing so also, that's not, kind of our mind if you want to do a podcast and you're not listening to other podcasts i mean like you, you have to in order to get a sense of like how to you know how to do it but also uh and i've this is gonna be like the fifth time i've referenced this but i think also one of the greatest interview viewers is hot ones like if you watch hot ones the way he interviews the way he presents the questions the way he gives the guest time to speak and everything is just very well timed and i know a lot of that's editing but it's presented in such a great way and there are other episodes that he there are other shows that he does that are full like podcasts like this. And you could hear him speak in that way as well. It's very similar to what you're saying, how Conan does it. And it's, I uh, that's a really like he, for me, he's up there as like one of the one of the great YouTube interviewers for sure. Asking good questions isn't easy it's because, not. well, you've seen it. I've seen it. One of the most like painful things for me to witness is when somebody asks somebody how you feel. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, like. You just won this tournament. How do you feel? I, I feel like shit, Alex. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you meant to say there? And I get it. It's like you want to them to express their emotion at that point, but just saying, "How do you feel?" is like, you know, asking somebody who walks into a restaurant, "Are you hungry?" Like, yeah, 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 yeah. A pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, good assumption there. That's also my my biggest pet peeve. So when I directing uh, 
like we just did the Carl's World Champ- Cards World Championship and stuff. And that was one thing I kept telling uh, uh, our hosts and stuff. I was like, do not ask the player how they feel after they won, because that is the most stupid question you could ever ask somebody. Instead, present it. Hey, you just you just won that. You just won that game. That was a pretty tight game. What are your thoughts on how the final went? That's how you present a how do you feel question without asking them how they feel because they're not going to go, oh, I feel pretty good, and then it ends there. They're going to give you their thoughts on, on how they felt about that, how they, you know, oh, man, you know, I was really upset because this happened, this happened, and they're going to expand on it, right? Just from that simple phrasing alone. So, like, I'm right there with you. How do you feel is the most annoying? And I still see professional casters on TV do it sometimes. I'm just like, oh, my. it's such a crutch question because you didn't, you weren't prepared. You didn't know where to go. So you immediately went to, how do you feel? And then the other one I hate is, how are you doing today? <laughs> Why are we asking how people are doing? Who cares? Let's get into the topic <laughs> of the conversation. <laughs> well, the way I kind of envision it is, like, you have a destination that you want your your interview or your, your guest to get to. How they get there is not is not like you don't care. You don't care if they take the highway, the back roads, the helicopter or they or they, you know, yeah, the magic carpet. It doesn't matter. But they need to know the destination. If you if, if the destination is like a foot in front of you, that's a that's a how do you feel question. You're like, I need you to go there. Well, they're like, OK, there's only one way to get there, and that's to take a step forward. Yeah. But if you're like, you know, OK, we need to get to the CN Tower downtown. Let's go to the CN Tower. Then they'll be like, oh, well, I, I take this way. I do this. There's so much more for them to get there. But the destination is the same. The outcome is the same. But you're giving them so much more, you know, uh, so much more birth for them to to, to pivot, to go, yeah. to take the scenic route, to not. Like some people don't want to answer questions, uh, uh, certain questions. And some people want to really elaborate on more interesting questions. And if you give them those margins to either keep an answer short and to the point or to expand and be flowery about it. That's what's important. And I, and that's kind of what I've, I've come to learn. And that's what I'm still improving on, um, you know, moving forward. Yeah. It's always an, like, it's always proven, right? It's a, you never, it's never a thing you've truly, I, I guess the people we mentioned maybe truly mastered it, but like, it's always a, something to improve upon. And then, um, also I always tell people, if you don't, if you're not watching back your own content as well, just to take notes on how you did, like, that's an important step as well. Like I watch back everything we produce and I take notes on, oh, I made it, we, we should change this next time. We should produce it next time. Or I take notes on how the interviews go or, you know, that's important. That's a, you gotta, um, one of my favorite phrases that people use is you gotta do the work, right? <laughs> you wanna succeed in doing something, you gotta put the work in to get there. You can't just throw something up and expect it to work and then get mad when it doesn't because, well, did you put the effort in? Did you put the work in? Did you try to improve? Did you... You, no, nothing you put out is ever going to be perfect so you have to like constantly make adjustments even with our goliath Conley, right like i think it went really well it was super well received i'm very happy with it but there are, i got a whole list of notes of things that we got to change for next time or improve upon um and that's just that's a uh, part of growing as you you know do this kind of stuff so very important important things to keep in mind if uh, if you're doing this kind of content and we're going to keep doing the content into uh, 2023 it's going to be a great year ahead mark uh, lots to look forward to, like we mentioned, and yeah, that that's kind of been our like year in year in review into uh, uh, the year looking ahead. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we're again, like I said, we're we're recording this on the twenty first of December. I think yeah. we're you and I are are well deep into a nice deserved break. Oh yeah, because yeah. so I, I don't know when we're vacation back. all year. So yeah, <laughs> so take you just got off. married, so you got yeah. a whole lot of catching up to yes. do on a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Oh, yeah. All right. Looks um, like I wore my lobster shirt for you today. Is it your I favorite? Know. This is my favorite shirt of yours. That I was like, I don't know if it fits anymore. But <laughs> Doesn't matter. It has to bust it out. Yeah. No, it's it looks it looks. It, that is my favorite thing. We used to do yes. all kinds of like trivia and stuff, and you were always yeah. like, in this like one, said, and also the pizza one, the melted pizza shirt I had. That was the other one. So you good. Lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad that 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 made a. Uh, I'm glad that that made an appearance. But all right. Well, there you have it. That's it. You know what's coming up. You've met Mark. And um, I think we'll uh, we'll 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 end this with a nice little montage of all the guests, all the guests that we've had in 2022. Does it sound oh, yeah. good? Sounds great. Right. Yeah, we've had so many great people. Let's take a oh, we'll we'll present it in the way that the Academy Awards does it when people have died. So this sort of a, mem- a memoir of all the people. Oh we've my seen god! Every- no, I'm just kidding. You- We're not going to present it like that. <laughs> 
That would, uh, be, I should, that would be so weird. <laughs> I, I should also uh, give big shout outs to uh, essentially uh, all the um, all of our sponsors that are with us currently. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Uh, I want to give a big ups to the Realm Games. Uh, I want to give huge ups to obviously Kayfabe Cards, uh, to BCW Supplies, mm -hmm. and uh, to everyone else who has kind of contributed down the line, uh, perhaps in the future as well. Uh, there's going to be more. And uh, you'll see plenty other partnerships and, and wonderful things. Yeah. So B BCW took a big chance uh, very early on with the show. So I, I especially appreciate them. And uh, if you've used the discount code that we always advertise, um, that's that helps us a lot. So uh, you can still use it. It's always there. It never, never expires. ISP 10. I'm, I'm no I'm plugging right now. But like if you want to help support the show, I mean, you can't you can join our Patreon as well. But if you also want to support in other ways. You know, go get yourself something nice of BCW. They got so many great stuff for like all the, you know, co card collecting you do. Not just even for like comic books and stuff. They have like dude, comic, comic books, man. Yeah. yeah, I keep mine in sleeves as well. So anytime I get a new comic book, you know, get get some more sleeves from BCW. And so you know, use that code, get yourself ten percent off, and that helps us. We get a kickback from there. So um, any every time you do that, and so many people used it this year, it was a surprising amount actually. And so I'm very, you know, thankful. Uh, thank you for uh, supporting them and supporting us and. Uh, it's a nice mutual benefit. Definitely. And hey, if you're in Toronto or you're not in Toronto, um, check out uh, Harry Tarantula as well. Uh, if you're in Toronto, use the code FLAKE5, get 5% off. Hey, there you go. wow, so many plugs happening right now. <laughs> Why not? I know. That's not what we're getting at. But uh, Isn't that uh, uh, Drood, right? Isn't that Harry Tarantula? He's the, yeah, Dave yeah, Rude. Yeah. Dave Rude. Yeah, big, big yeah. Uh, former player. I say big former player. I mean, he calls himself like washed up and old. But it's Didn't what's he, funny like, about him. retire or something at the end of the year? He said he, he retired. Yeah. To a degree, I mean, he's kind of like the the team dad for a lot of other really good players, such as like oh, Isaac. Cruz. Yeah, like he's Isaac's. These, yeah, yeah, he's Isaac's, Isaac's dad. adopted dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the team dad. He's just a yeah. good dude. Isaac, obviously, my uh, my apps, the bane of my competitive existence. This guy is just <laughs> like a wraith. Um, uh, the other last thing I want to mention actually is I turned my whole desk and computer around, and now you see what's behind me. And yeah. I think I think this is much better. <laughs> I per, I moved into this Taco Bell from the nineties, so I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can uh, still get a chalupa for like seventy nine cents. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. You can kind of see the prices right right there, just slightly. It's just uh, unbelievable. <laughs> My first so Canada, uh, at least where I grew up in Montreal, we didn't have Taco Bell for ages, and the reasoning is hilarious because. Quebec's meat standards were too high for Taco Bell, <laughs> so they yeah. never got there. There's uh, uh, I don't know if you ever watched Food Wars on YouTube. Um, uh, but they like, they will compare like, uh, McDonald's in the U S to McDonald's in the UK or something like that. And every time they go to the ingredients list, the U S is filled with a whole bunch of weird shit. And then they're always <laughs> like, they go to that and they're like, well, that's all, all illegal in Europe. So like, I remember the Domino's episode, they were like, uh, here's all the ingredients in the pizza dough in the U S Domino's and it's all this like artificial nonsense. That's like, you're like, holy shit. And then they go to the UK and it's like water and dough. <laughs> yeah it's like, okay wow yeah. all right <laughs> that's probably a lot um, better for you like one of the most eye-opening things for me was i remember because i have family in florida when i went to go visit them a long time ago was we did taco bell drive through on the way home from something and a car of like five people we all got food and like the bill was like like 11 dollars. Oh, i was like nuts. yeah i'm like how how i'm like oh those tacos those soft shell tacos were like like 39 cents each yeah. i was like what yeah i'm like it's crazy how man. is this how is groceries better than this and then i you learn about the dollar menu and everything and i'm like okay that then yeah. this past year uh nick bolas taught me about the biggie bag at, at wendy's oh the biggie bag yeah, my yeah, yeah yeah you blew never had my the, mind you never tried that you never got the biggie bag. i before? did i did it's pretty amazing um, yeah we stopped off and did some biggie bag action when i was in new jersey Heck for yeah. the battle hard in there yeah yeah, man. I, I mean, I don't really eat fast food as much. Uh, the older you get, the harder it is to fat, eat fast food. Yeah. But it's still like a go-to, like uh, you know, hangover meal, or you know, a little bit drunk. Like you go to Taco Bell and get like a ton of tacos for eleven dollars. Yeah, crush it. Yeah, uh, I might do that today. You got me. <laughs> I might ripped go... and having Taco Bell later. Hell yeah, <laughs> uh, could possibly happen. All right, there you have it. All right, we, we we've extended this way past uh, what it's supposed to be. But Mark, thank you so much for all the work you do for flesh and blood and uh, to all the community and everybody else thank you for for watching us here is i was gonna say your moment of the sand that's another person i admire a lot is uh <laughs> john stewart but here is a little retrospect of all the guests we had on isp we'll see you next year 
world I want. 